Hello and welcome to Monday's Bookworm episode 17 the podcast that helps people understand why and when you should read books I'm your host Santosh Nimmani India's first proud introvert career mentor and today we are going to talk about the art of happiness by Dalai Lama and Howard C Cutler The art of happiness is a guide for the people in the world who want to learn about eastern spiritual practices this book talks about everything about being human like how to deal with everyday problems so you can live a happy life plus how you can stay calm when things are very hard and stressful it uses buddhist ideas from tibet to help busy people in the world find more balance in their lives and spiritual freedom first of all the author talks about the art of happiness he says that and even it is been considered that happier people have it much easier than unhappy ones studies indicate that you are more likely to find a better partner have more meaningful marriages be a better parent have a strong immune system and live 10 years longer additionally it improves mental resilience and capacity to deal with hardship or trauma happy employees perform far better and earn significantly more than sad employees who passively watch the clock these satisfied workers are more productive loyal absent less frequently the art of happiness examines happiness from the perspective of two distinct authors first let's consider howard cutler a relatively unknown american psychiatrist and 14th dalai lama the leader of tibetan buddhism and representative of eastern world view although viewpoints differ they strive to reduce the situation to its most fundamental human level here minor characteristics such as gender race religion culture and language are irrelevant there are similarities we are all share as members of human race the principles or their views thought suggest that they may be on to something the buddhists or the buddha advises against unthinking acceptance of his teachings instead you should investigate the veracity of everything try the process yourself and dismiss anything that appears to be unreliable buddhists have practiced strategies to train the mind and create inner resources and have been willing to reject what appeared to be non sense for the past 2500 years over time only the gold or things that may be objectified or objectively true about human existence remain next is about the purpose of life dalai lama knows pretty well what life is all about it is to try to be happy no matter what religion you follow we are all looking for something better in life from the western point of view it doesn't seem like something that you can be learned and kept by training the mind buddhism says that happiness is a goal that can be reached there are things in a way of your happiness even if you have a huge win and reach your goal a huge loss that sends you into a deep depression you will eventually get back to your baseline that is happiness this is called hedonic adoption by psychologists as you might expect research shows that people who win the lottery are pretty happy about it however after a year the high wears off and they return to normal or even worse john c told me about a friend from high school who won the lottery he quit his job and lived the life for a year which meant he traveled did drugs and ate as much as he wanted when i saw him i wasn't sure if the if the lottery was this great thing that would make our lives perfect and solve all our problems he went from being a fit handsome man to a fat slob this is also true for terrible things like getting cancer going blind or being paralyzed at first it kicks you in the balls like nothing else but you always end up back where you started so this internal point of reference is where things stand no matter how good or bad things are in your outside world you will always come back to this point buddhism shows us how to raise this automatic starting point next thing is about comparing mind you would hang out in the slums of india with 50 bucks and be much happier than a person from the west 
who has $1 million in the bank. Even if we are doing well financially, we tend to be unhappy if our neighbors is doing better. As HL Menken from the pub said, a rich man is one whose income is 100 bucks more than of his wife's sister's husband. Ha ha ha. As we see how happy you are with your life depends on how happy others are. Money is just one way to measure success. You can also look at intelligence, beauty or just high status. If you consistently compare yourself to the people at the top of the hierarchy, you might have some problems. But if you turn your perspective around and look at people who are less, you can think about how lucky you are. Instead of being full of jealous and anger, you will be full of gratitude and happiness. The next thing what others talk about is enemies. Most of the time, we don't want to wish our enemies well. We'd love it if they got what they deserve. But even if you make your enemy sad, what do you have to be happy about? When you think about it, there is nothing that can be done about that. But this care a lot about those who are against them. This is because hate makers, it hard for us to be happy. And if you can be patient and tolerant when enemies show up, everything else will be a lot easier. So enemies are very important part of happiness practitioner's life. Think about what it would be like if you never had an enemy. You would just appear and everyone would take care of you, feed you by hand and makes go 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 noises. If you never had problems when you were young, you would never have a chance to grow. At first it might seem cool but sooner or later it turns in a terrible truth. To learn patience, you need to have someone to be patient with you. Unlike the enemy, your friends doesn't usually test you and give chances like this. So if you find one, you should treat it with respect. You should be thankful if your boss is, if your boss is, if your boss is a jerk. Th this enemy is very rare and there aren't many of them. Conflict and struggle lead them to learning, examination, growth and new insights. The next thing what others talk about is suffering. A woman named Kissa Gotami lost her only child during the time of Buddha. She couldn't take it. So she went from person to person looking for a medicine that would bring her child back to life. People said that Buddha had this kind of medicine. That lady went to Buddha showed respect and asked can you make a medicine that will heal my child. I know medicine like that, said the Buddha, but I need certain things in order to make it. The woman who was relieved asked, what do you need? Bring me some mustard seeds. I want the mustard seeds to come from the home where no child, parent, spouse or servant has died. The woman agreed and she started looking for the mustard seeds by going home to home. At each home, the people agreed to give her seed. But when she asked if anyone had died there, so found that that had come to every house. In some houses, a daughter had died. In others, a servant. In others, a husband or a parent had died. The woman couldn't find a place where he wouldn't, she wouldn't have to worry about dying. When the mother realized she wasn't the only one who was sad, she let go of her dead child's body and went back to Buddha. The Buddha was so kind and said, you might or you thought you were the only one who had lost a son. But the law of death says that there is no persistence among living things. The woman's search shows that everyone has to deal with loss and pain. It doesn't matter how bad things may seem for you. Everyone at some point is going to feel that same pain. Everyone and everything has to go through pain. Problems are about to come in your day. The biggest problem Biggest problems are always going to happen. You can't get your old man up any anymore. You lose your memory as you get older. You get sick and you die. If you try to avoid them, you might feel better for a while. But sooner or later, they will show you up again. If you have the kuhanas to face your pain or the willpower to face the pain, you will be more likely to understand what's going on. It might be scary, but you will be able to deal with them much better if you don't try to avoid them. Some people would feel, oh, I shouldn't be going through this, then accept suffering. Why me? They feel like they don't deserve to suffer, that they are some kind of victim.
from this point of view, pain is bad and should be avoided at all costs. Even though everyone goes through pain and suffering, people in the East are more able to deal with it. Because of spiritual learning such as Buddhism and also because there is no so much suffering on the streets. But most people have gone in the opposite direction. But we have hope and faith that life is mostly fair and that they are good persons who deserve good things to happen to them. If the world doesn't meet these needs, people can become very sad and depressed. If I'm sad, it's because of something or someone else. They might blame the government, the education system, their parents, someone of another gender or their partner. Shifting perspective is the next topic where others are being talking about. Once upon a time, a disciple of Greek philanthropist who gave three years by his master to give money to anyone who insulted him when this trial was over. The master told him, now you can go to Anthonus and listen wisdom and learn wisdom. As a disciple came in, he saw a wise man sitting at the gate and insulting everyone who came in and went. He also made fun of disciple who started laughing. Why do you laugh when I make fun of you? The wise man asked. Because of three years I have been paying for this kind of thing and now you get it to me for nothing. The wise man said, go into the city, it's all yours. This story from the 4th century shows that how important it is to go through hard times because the disciple was willing to change how he saw problems. The world wants him. No matter what happened in the world, he saw it differently. The ability to shift perspective is the most... That's it for today. Next week, we'll continue to help you with more episodes of Monday's Bookworm, which, which is exclusively released on Monday. Want to suggest a book for the future episode of Monday's Bookworm? Click the link in the show notes to record your message. Do follow or add your favorites of book summary. We'll meet you in the next episode of Monday's Bookworm. Till then, have a nice week.